Hello, everyone. I'm Stan Miller. I'm the PR and Analyst Relations Manager for Rockwell Automation in the EMEA region, and I am here with Nicola Jovine. He is our Strategic Business Developer for Digital Design. Nicola, thank you for joining us in the Rock Studio. Thank you, Stan, for inviting me. It's really exciting to be here. So we're here about to talk about taking software to the cloud and what's next and what's new for digital design. So first question I'd really like to ask you is all about software as a service and how it compares to existing software. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, thank you, Stan. Great question. So uh, if we look at the industry today, uh, we can um, identify three major types of software. So the first one is the embedded software. It can be a firmware uh, of a drive or a controller. So something that the uh, Rockwell Automation customer are really familiar with. So it's, it's a software that runs typically on a specific automation hardware, and um, yeah, it's really optimized and designed to, to run on that specific hardware. So the next one is the, uh, what we call the local computer software, and that's something that you install on your, on your PC, on your uh, workstation, and you start using it. So an, an example might be Studio 5000. Um, another type of software is the what we call the on-premise software, and that's typically running on a data center in a building. And uh, for that one, is uh, I will say that we you really need specialized resources to uh, to install it and to to maintain it, and might be also um, a bit expensive, right, to 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 install and to and to maintain it. Now we have the software as a service. So the software as a service is typically running on a regional data center in the cloud, which makes collaboration between different business functions uh, very easy. And, uh, and typically, the customer will pay a subscription fee. And, they, uh, and the subscription fee include the, all the initial acquisition cost and the maintenance cost. Uh, and, and it's typically very uh, easy to manage. And it shifts the responsibility from the user all the way to the vendor, who is the one supplying the hardware and the software and maintaining it. Nicola, I think that's a really great kind of level set and grounding so we understand our viewers have a good baseline of what we're talking about. So let's take it a little deeper. What makes these capabilities attractive to those industrial decision makers looking at these solutions? Right. So. Um, yeah, if we look at the, uh, at the industry and the industrial decision maker, they are starting evaluating more and more the software as a service model. Um, and we, we can see that there are five key uh, drivers which are enabling the adoption of software as a service in the industrial automation space. So the first one is clearly access everywhere. So uh, nowadays, everyone is working remotely, so having the capability to access data and software uh, wherever you are uh, on whatever device you are using, it's going to be very important. The second piece is collaboration. So of course, having the software in the cloud, it's it will enable the collaboration between different business functions, which lead to new business outcomes for the uh, companies. Uh, the, the other piece is the on-demand scaling. So this is actually uh, helping customers to, to start smaller and then getting bigger by um, growing their infrastructure, the software, the number of users uh, that are uh, using the software. So this is very flexible. And then uh, the, um, uh, we have, of course, the cost. Typically, the cost associated with software as a service is very much reduced compared to the typical traditional software. Because like I said, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the service provider is ultimate the, uh, the responsible for the initial cost and for maintaining the software. Uh, and then clearly performances. So as a service provider, you want to uh, provide the, the, the software which is running on the best-in-class technology. So the high-performance PC and data servers that are available in the market. But last but not least, it's security. So when we are talking about cloud and moving to the cloud, a lot of the operations teams are always concerned about security. So now security might be a barrier for some of them. Reality is that it's a big benefit to move to the cloud because you can always access those software with the latest patches with an end-to-end -end encryption, which is basically the best level of security that you can get. All right. Well, I can see you connecting all the dots. That's really great. So. How is Rockwell Automation helping customers on their, you know, this software as a service in the cloud journey? Right. 
So uh, Rockwell is, is investing quite heavily in the, uh, in the software as a service. So we released our Rockwell Automation Factory Talk Hub platform, uh, which is actually a, a platform. So it's not a product. It's a platform where we are hosting all the software as a service offering in the cloud, running on Microsoft Azure, where we are streamlining the, the experience for our customers to get access very easily to those software in the, in the cloud. Uh, no matter where they are working and no matter what type of device they are connected to. So, um, and we have all the, the, the software offerings which goes from, you know, design to operate and maintain. And for this reason, we decide to, to group uh, simply those type of uh, uh, software based on the user and the persona that uh, is working with those software. And that's why we have the, what we call design hub. Uh, and then we have the maintenance hub and the operations hub. So uh, those are those are not products, it's just a way to, you know, to group the, the different software and tools that we provide to our customers. And the idea is to give them a, a unified experience so they can log in on this platform and then they can start using the design tools or the operation and maintenance software that we offer them. Great. Well, you can see what it's such a holistic offering, right? Indeed. So much going on. Okay, so one last question. Uh, can you share some specifics regarding the, the context of these digital design environments? Yeah, that's uh, uh, absolutely. So uh, if, uh, if we think about uh, digital design uh, journey uh, uh, as a software, as a service, I can identify three, uh, three main steps in this journey, in this process. So the first one is moving the data into the cloud. So, uh, and that's where we, we take the, the, um, the, the, the customer, let's say, data automation project and we put into the cloud and they can access those data wherever they are. Of course, enabling also the collaboration between the different teams. And that's what we call the factory talk vault. That's the central storage location where the customer can, uh, can store their automation data. Then the second piece is moving and hosting into the cloud the design software, the design tools that our customer are already familiar with. So think about Logic Designer, MLA 3D, or Arena. Those are software that the customer are using as a traditional software running on their PC. Now, what we are doing is moving them to the cloud so that they can access those software via, via a web browser. So you get your PC connected to internet and you can open whatever version of Logix Design or Emulate 3D you need at that time. And then the third piece or the third step is creating new cloud native software. So, and that's our, the, the new brand, uh, the, the brand new uh, software that we, um, we are releasing which are Factory Talk Design Studio. It's our cloud native software for uh, automation design for uh, all the automation projects. It's a very modern software, cloud native with all the benefits of the software as a service in the cloud. And then the other new software is Factory Talk Optics. So that's the new offering for uh, the visualization piece. So uh, at the end, to, to, to wrap up, I would say that we are investing quite a lot in software as a service to give our customers the flexibility to use the software, getting access to those software everywhere, anytime, on whatever device they own, enabling the collaboration between the different business function to create new, um, new, new value and new business outcomes. Nicola, that is a fantastic overview, and I think it makes a lot. You've really helped, I think, our audience understand what's driving this software-as-a-service trend and where and how Rockwell Automation is playing in this space. So thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. Continue to follow Rockwell Automation on LinkedIn. We're going to have lots of videos streaming uh, on all kinds of different technology topics with, soft, with subject matter experts like Nicola throughout the week. Uh, thank you so much for viewing, and we'll see you the next Rock Studios broadcast very soon.